morning. I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everybody. It's your natural dog with Angela Ardolino. And you know when you meet somebody and you have just the most killer conversation and you're like, I love this person. I have so much in common. I could talk to him all day. Well, I, that's how my guest is today. Dr. James St. Clair, um, a rehab, a veterinarian who actually opened up a rehab facility and brought in experts. And he is one of my favorite veterinarians to empower a pet parent, especially when it comes to rehabbing. And when you think about if we injure ourselves or if we have to have surgery, we go into rehabilitation and physical therapy. Why wouldn't our dogs? Um, he also has some wonderful preventative tips. I learned so much. His website's incredible. You guys are going to really enjoy this interview with Dr. James St. Clair. This is Odie, my baby old man, a.k.a. Barky Von Schnauzer. He's 11 years old and the love of my life. So Odie's favorite thing is to run up the stairs at night when we go to bed, and I noticed a couple years ago that he would stop midway up, and that's when I knew he was suffering from arthritis and joint pain. So the only treatments that I was being offered were harmful prescription drugs that cause liver damage and suppress the immune system, and I just wasn't willing to do that for my senior dog. And full-spectrum CBD oil was the only thing that worked. I would give it to him, and literally within 15 minutes, he was puppy-like again. I could see that he wasn't in pain, he wasn't panting, he was running up the stairs. So on Odie, I use Ease, which is a 550 milligram full-spectrum CBD oil with frankincense essential oil, turmeric and hemp oil, and it's great for arthritis, aches and pains, and allergies. No one likes to see their dog suffer. I know I didn't. And to be able to find an all natural product that doesn't cause additional harm and helps them is a lifesaver for me, and it brings me so much peace of mind. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. And we're here with Dr. James St. Clair, which I'm just want to make sure I get it right. I'm just going to call you James. 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 James the vet. James the veterinarian that saw uh, something missing in his world and did something about it, which I love. And it's funny because I just went through this experience with my own uh, dog, my Doberman, who has osteosarcoma. So we were seeing if she was a good candidate for amputation and my vets are about two hours away from me it's five um, women who practice holistic and integrative and one of their vets a couple years ago noticed the same thing that you noticed that there was no rehab nobody was taking care of the animals after surgery recognizing whether they were in pain what they could do so she opened up next door to them so that's who i ended up going to and I learned so much. And then I went on your website and I'm obsessed with your website, which you said you're going to get a new one soon. But what I love most about you is that you're empowering the pet parent. And I want to pick the heck out of your brain because um, I feel like you were a pet parent that went, wait a minute, why isn't anybody sharing this information? Why isn't anyone empowering them? It's just, I feel like some vets feel like they're going to take away business from themselves instead of when you let us know more, we can do better and work with our veterinarian instead of against it. But um, tell us a little, how did you, when did you go, all right, I, this is what I'm trained in. I know there's more. How do I bring in more and do something and, and train these pet parents on um, how they could take better care of their pets, especially when they're in pain? So, um, look, it, it, uh, when I got out of vet school, the, the canine physical therapy world or canine rehabilitation, they were playing with the terminology. It was just kind of new and in, in coming in. And I just, it made sense to me, right? It's, you have orthopedic surgery, you have neurologic, uh, or you have surgery on, uh, you know, a, a back dog. They need to have physical therapy. And yet it wasn't available at the time especially in our particular region. So when I got out of school, I was like, I got to go into this. That led me to go, like I would work all day uh, as a typical veterinarian. And then in the middle of the day, I would drive down to a specialty referral hospital and I would evaluate dogs that had just 
gone through TPLO surgery for one of the surgeons in the area. And I would handwrite these like, here's what you need to do for after the dog comes home. And then I found myself obviously repeating and repeating the same thing. And so I started putting them into these little guides. And then I literally said, wow, this is really good information. Veterinarians should, the surgeons should have this. I'm going to go on my little pony show and I'm going to go to one of the conferences and I'm going to put up my booth and I'm going to offer my information for purchase. And they would pass that out. And what I quickly realized was, is that the surgeons didn't necessarily feel like they needed to change anything. Right. And then as I got deeper into thinking about it, at the end of the day, the person that I cared about the most was that animal and that human that took care of them. And I really just wanted to get the information to them. And so we put it online. And at first we were selling the, you know, these little guides and books. And then finally I said, you know what, we're going to just give this all away for free. And we're going to just continue to work on, um, you know, then developing other ways to, you know, support them through nutritional things. And so but, that's, uh, that's which I love. Started. And you've yeah. also vetted products that actually work. Um, yeah. So if your dog is experiencing joint pain or if it has had surgery, um, you have products that you vetted that you also recommend, which I also love. It's a one-stop shop. We kind of do the same thing for CBD dog health where we have all these guides. Okay, your dog has seizures. Your dog has arthritis. How can CBD help? It's the same type right. of thing. And let me tell you what, I'm one of those pet parents. So what you have created, that's why I'm so crazy about it because um, – I just read one of your guides, the luxating patella, which yeah. I see undiagnosed every single day in these little dogs. All the time. All yes. the time. That is, it is painful, correct? Yes. I tell mean, them, I think tell, that... Tell them, and this is like little shih tzus, guys. This isn't, you know, your active sport dog that's running around and pulls something because he's running 100 miles an hour. This is six pound shih tzus have, these th have this, and it is um, painful. But um, what I love is I imagine that you, we go to your website. I know my dog has this. Whether I've decided I'm going to do something about it or not, I have a guide on your website that's going to tell me about it, what are my choices, and then what I can do as far as exercises, which I think is a totally. beautiful thing. Yeah, totally. So, look, I mean, you and I were alluding to this previously, but essentially at the end of the day, the, 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 the challenging part, for the pet parent is that they don't see it, right? They don't necessarily see it because it's in front of them every day, right? And then, you know, you expect your expert who let's say is the veterinarian to then go and find that thing. And that window of time that that animal has to get diagnosed and by that veterinarian, it, it's very short, right? These appointments in the Western world are very tight. They're 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minute appointments. But on top of that, then you take into fact that the animal walks into the animal hospital and they're doped on adrenaline, right? And then all of a sudden they're like, no, what are you talking about? I feel great. Let's get out of here. <laughs> you know? So um, one of the things that I hyper-focused on was that I would always ask the people, do you think your animal is in pain? And the answer nine times out of 10 was always no. And I'd say, why? Well, it's because they're not crying. They're not whining. They're eating, said them, doing everything normal. Yeah, exactly. And so I said, look, it's actually, there are these really subtle signs that you got to be on the lookout for. So I call them the 12 subtle silent signs of arthritis or pain. And, you know, I wanted to just have the pet parents at least have that list in the back of their head so they could be on the lookout, you know, for those little things. Yeah. And I, I, I want to go through those signs because sure. I love them. And some of them, you, the listeners may hear and go, duh, but others they're not. Um, and it's really funny because it's what kind of sent me on my journey to find something that would help my nine-year-old schnauzer when I realized he was no longer running up the steps. He'd get right. halfway and stop and look at me like, I can't do it anymore. And that's one, yeah. of, that's one of the signs. So I, I immediately went to, that. yeah, I, I immediately went to my vet, my conventional, actually she uh, was East West, she says, but she is a conventional vet. Um, and I immediately was told brain tumor, degenerative myelopathy, you name it. And it's just my dog 
was old and had arthritis. And giving him a full spectrum hemp extract took care of the problem. He was running up the yep. stairs again. Now, yep. I don't even let him. He's 15 now. I don't even let him run up the stairs anymore. But that is definitely one of the signs. Um, not jumping up on the couch or off the couch or getting in and out of the car. Um, you know, the way they're standing to me is what's clear. You know, the, the yes. either whether it's the front feet out spread weird I read on your exactly. side that the legs together, which I've seen a million times. Um, those who are listening know I have a very busy groom shop, two shops, and I would say 50% of the dogs that come into my shop are suffering and are in pain and people do Sadly. not recognize it. So of those that yeah. I didn't mention, what are some other things that pet parents can look for that you know shows your dog is suffering one way or another? Yeah, I mean, you could go even like farther back. Like there is this, there's sometimes it's this hesitation. There's this delay, right? It's like Where they're their about brain to go is saying one thing. Stairs. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and they're like, okay, I can do this, and they're like, I'm gonna get this done. Um, you know, it's this pause, and then it's you know, and then it's the jump or the the trying to walk up. I think I think it's important. Like, so let's just say, let's just let's go with when a dog is just standing. If the dog has discomfort in its hind end, right? Whether it's in the knees or if it's in the hips, right? From when they stand, they'll oftentimes walk, stop, and then they will readjust, right? They'll bring their feet in just a little bit closer together so that they can then shift their weight to the front end, you know, versus having all the weight on the back end. Wow. So, that that's a that's a pretty easy one. Um, when you ask them to sit, there are dogs that will like again delay or think about it. There are dogs that will also just plunk. Right? It's like they just plunk down. Sorry about that. <laughs> the audio <laughs> um, sound effects. But they'll just yeah they'll just plunk themselves down. Um, if they're laying down and they're trying to get up, yeah, you know, that's a it's, huge it's, one. Yeah, super slow in that process. Um, yeah, is is a good one. Licking certain joints. You know, I didn't add that to like my master list, but there's a lot of dogs. I just did a study on a laser, um, like a cold laser therapy, mm -hmm. and this dog had what they refer to as a lick granuloma on the wrist. But the reality was the dog was licking the wrist because the wrist hurt the dog, right? And as we started the laser therapy with that dog, it was a home laser unit. Um, not only did the wound improve, but the dog felt better, right? Because we were we were um, improving that inflammatory situation inside of it. And they dog. will, and they will also lick. Like even if it's not that's not what hurts, they're licking because something else hurts, and it's kind of a, an anxiety release. A I remember that. Yeah, that the night before I brought um, Odie to the vet, he licked all night long. And I'm like, this is a release of anxiety and, exactly. you know, trying to get, because just imagine being in pain anymore. Those of you that are older, I have rheumatoid arthritis. I know what it feels like, um, right. which I treat with a full spectrum hemp extract um, and nothing else. I'm sorry, not nothing else. I diet, I exercise, I do all those things. I mean, not right, any right. other medication um, that's not natural. So these are, and I would say, you know, dog, I find most people don't understand when dogs become seniors, senior citizens. So what age should they start maybe paying attention to? If they're thinking everything's good, what age do you think they should start going paying attention to see if anything's a little off? It's a great question. So um, it, it alludes to a, a broader concept that I have in my mind that I continue to think about because, again, there is... Um, we're still end up talking about a reactive mindset, right? We're still talking about when we see it, right? Amen. Versus like things about- What we can do life... to prevent it from happening in the first place. Right. Got it. Right. The lifestyle of it. There's a brilliant uh, MD that's out there. His name is Peter Adia. And he just says, look, at the end of the day, um, it's more so about when we shift uh, chronic disease from appearing on how uh, he was referring to centurions for humans that live over a hundred. And the ones that get there, they just 
push the disease process farther down the road. Got so it. I, I think that um, to answer your question, I think, I think it's important from a proactive mindset to say, what's my dog's breed, right? What are the pre genetic predispositions that my breed has, right? What's the lifestyle of my dog? What am I feeding my dog? And then am I, are there loopholes or little other things that I should be adding in? I watched your uh, interview with Judah. You know, introducing omega fatty acids earlier in the diet, it's like a no brainer. It's like that should be started at puppyhood, you know, and, and, and that's that's just a, an easy, good example of it. Um, so I think it's more of we got to shift into a mindset of, hey, what are some simple natural compounds or things that are not in my animal's diet that I could actually introduce, you know, earlier on and push that, you know, farther down the road. So it's kind of like when that person comes into the shop and wants to know about raw feeding and then sees the price and says, oh gosh, that's, ex that's really expensive. And then I go, it pays off in the end. It does. How it pays that's off right. is that you're not having to run to your vet because it's having some sort of allergy, allergic reaction to whatever's in that kibble that you're feeding, or um, the gut gets upset, or arthritis or disease sets in because you're not supporting their immune system. So that's what you just said, being proactive. I am such a proactive person. I hate being reactive. And that is how I feel um, most conventional medicine is. And Sadly, that's how they're trained, right? right. They're trained to be disease finders, right? Not like disease preventers. I love that. I think we need to make a t-shirt. Disease preventer. I know, right? right. <laughs> I love it. Well, we have to take a short break. Um, and when sure. we come back, I want to talk more about these common um, ailments that our dogs are suffering from and how that whole concept of we absolutely should go through a rehab just like a human would when we got injured. So we're going to talk more about that when we come back. This is Blanche, and she's the most noodle-ish dog you've ever met in your entire life. She's just the most loved dog you've ever met, but if you leave her alone, it becomes a total opposite thing. Blanche has severe separation anxiety to the point where she will scratch doors down to the wood, bark all night, cry if you leave her for five minutes. Um, I tried the collars, I tried the sprays, I tried thunder blankets. The only thing that's ever worked was CBD, and that's why I got started in this business. Our comp tincture is 550 milligrams of full spectrum CBD and lavender. It's the perfect remedy for separation anxiety, anxiety, stress, or fear. I love my dog, and I hated knowing that she was home freaking out. So I wanted to find an all natural way to do it. No doggy Prozac, all natural. And once I found CBD, there's no other option. CBD dog health, healing naturally. And we're back with Dr. James St. Clair, and I'm enjoying this so much. I feel like I'm giving my own little private session with you. Um, so thank you. I want to go back to the luxating, am I saying that right? Luxating patella. I always feel like I'm saying that wrong because Blanche, one of our spokes doggies has this, um, and she takes CBD all the time. She's 11 now. And um, why are these little dogs suffering from this? And what is the best thing that they can do? Because I do feel like they are aware. I feel like vets are really good at going, this dog has this. I just don't think that the pet parents are very good at knowing what they can do past that. Um, Cause we'll get a lot of them come to the shop and go, oh, be careful she has, but they're not treating it or exercising or doing anything to support this issue that their dog is having. Yeah. What can they do? So, yeah, so I mean, right off the get-go, right? There's genetic predispositions for that, and that's really heavy in some some of those smaller breeds. So I think at the end of the day, um, in the younger years for them, right, when they're when their joints and the joint fluid and the the cartilage uh, and the joint capsule, when they're all fresh and young, still, um, you know, it, it depending on the degree of luxation. Uh, most of them are around a grade two, so they pop in, pop out, pop in, pop out. Um, I think a lot of those dogs are maybe startled by it. They'll maybe kick and adjust it and kind of get it back in and go about their way. But 
it's friction, right? So friction over time is going to lead to inflammation. Inflammation is going to lead to cartilage destruction and all that stuff. And do they think, suffer from muscle um, atrophy there too? Because they're changing the, the way they're using their leg? Sure. If it's more significant on one side, absolutely. That's going to come with time. But I think number one is weight management, right? Weight management is everything in these dogs. I have a little chihuahua that, that is actually here and um, he has to have surgery because he's progressed from a grade two to a grade three and now a grade four. But wow. and he's a young guy. And his reason is because he got heavier and heavier and heavier. And so, you know, I think weight management is in incredibly important. And then, like we alluded to previously, I think natural anti-inflammatories are incredibly important, right? And so they come in from a variety, a variety of different forms. And, you know, um, and I think, uh, like we alluded to previously, the omega fatty acids are important. I'm a big fan of um, methane, which is MSM. It's always included as like the third ingredient in a joint supplement. Um, but we're actually running a clinical trial right now out in Texas on that one raw material use in hip dysplasia for dogs and pain management because it's a really safe raw material and we can provide you know, from maintenance dose to very higher therapeutic doses. So we're, you know, and we're what learning is it? more about What is that. the raw material? MSM? What is it's that? MSM. Yeah. So it's just called methyl sulfonamethane. Uh, essentially, at the, at the end of the day, it's donating methyl groups and sulfur to your body. It's 34% sulfur. And what they've, what we know is, is that most of us are deficient in some of these micronutrients because of agriculture. And um, so when you start to, uh, you know, uh, when you, for example, one of my employees, he came to me, he had a torn ACL and I started him on MSM and he's back out running. Wow. You know, and, yeah. And I mean, he never had corrective surgery, but just reducing that inflammation on a daily basis and having it there all the time, you know, allowed him to then move, which then stimulates the whole joint process and everything. Let's the to body get do what then, it's supposed to do. I love yeah, it. Yeah, build muscle. And so, yeah, anyway. That's awesome. So that you would say this is one of your favorite uh, supplements right now for joints or hip dysplasia, I, you I, said? I do. I love the raw material for a, a variety of different reasons, just because one, it's uber safe. Two, um, it is incredibly affordable for people. So my interest was really in this sad situation for really large breed dogs or families that have multiple large breed dogs. If you were going to put them on some of the commercial joint supplements that are out there, you're going to go broke. It's incredibly expensive when you have these combination products versus having like, you know, targeted, simple, single sourced ingredients. Amen. It, I feel like the joint supplements is one of the worst, uh, bad, so hard to advise, so hard to, uh, you know, pick the good from the bad. It's almost as bad as CBD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the and original the competition. CBD. Anybody and their brother or sister can, you know, go to one of the contract manufacturers and, and put their label on it. Put their label Same on thing it. with yep. CBD. It's, it's I so you, I, my audience is probably sick of me saying this, but you always want to make sure we always are like, make sure you know where that product is coming from, who makes it, who's behind it. You can't find a person that's behind it, a veterinarian, a person who's a trained professional that is behind a product. That means it's probably some manufactured Marketing thing company. that's been slapped a label on it. So, and this happens exactly. all the time. I know very big, very trusted resources who white label the hell out of products. They're, they're good products, but they're still white labeled. Um, yeah. So there's a big difference in that. Um, all right. Uh, hip dysplasia is another thing I always see in my shop that I get worried with my big dogs. So I'm glad that you came up with something with that because these dogs, you get them in a tub and they don't even want to stand and it's hard and they all have sores underneath because they just lay around. Um, so I'm always slapping that CBD salve on them for that. But um, it's, I just it's, got some of that. 
Oh, good, good. I'm going to send you yep. some if you want them. But great for joints. It's so funny. I went to a physical therapist one time to work out a kink in my neck and ended up treating his dog with the salve, which he then turned around and gave to all of his patients. So now I have all of these people with no dogs coming into the shop to buy a dog salve to rub, <laughs> rub on their sore, sore joints. It's hilarious. Um, one at a time, Angela. This is what we do, right? Exactly. It's just improve one at a time. Yeah. And it's sad because it's probably just like we said, where they've gone out and tried a CBD product or a joint supplement and it didn't do anything and they paid all right. of this money. So that's why it's so important to make sure you get a good one. Can they go to your site? I know I saw the guides, all the information. You also have recommendations on hip dysplasia. I recommend this. Uh, yes. Luxating patella, I recommend. Awesome. Awesome. I'm telling you guys, this yeah. website, if you're a... A love of learn, love to learn like I do. It's one of the best. Topdoghealth.com in case you, you miss it. I want to talk. Um, we, we have a question from the audience that um, yes. I'm going to ask you, which I love because it deals with my own paranoia with my own, you know, little schnauzer. My first schnauzer is my dog that I lost at seven years and what sent me on this crazy journey of looking for holistic because, uh, of course, I did everything my conventional, fed her the kibble, over-vaccinated, fleeing. I did everything wrong. So my next baby, I wasn't going to do nothing wrong. So I wouldn't even let him jump up and down off the couch. And here's my thinking. I was like, okay, this is like me jumping off my roof, my first story roof on. I, I could probably do it, but um, I can't think that that would be very good doing it very often repeatedly on my body. So that's kind of how I considered it for him. And I was so paranoid that, you know, I wanted to keep him health, ha happy and healthy. And I'm going to bring that up. And now I'm going to bring up the question because she asked the same thing. Um, Mary, she Instagrammed us and she asked us that she has a new puppy and he's constantly jumping up and d uh, on and off the couch, um, the bed, you name it constantly. Should she be worried about his orthopedic well-being at his age? And is there a point where she should stop this behavior for his health? Which I'm also going to bring up another point. I also wouldn't let Odie go up and down the stairs. And when I say let, she's saying, should she be worried about it? And is there a point she should stop it? We shouldn't let it happen in the first place. Stopping a dog from doing something that they've always done is a lot harder to do if you don't let them do it in the first place. True. And guess what? You can also change your mind. I was paranoid about letting Odie up and down the stairs, so I didn't teach him forever. He would just wait. Then I taught him only to go up the stairs and not go down, which was kind of a problem because then he'd run upstairs to find me and then just stand at the top of the stairs and whine. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But honestly, guys, don't, don't let them do it in the first place. You have to teach a dog to jump up and down off the couch. They don't just do it. And if they do just do it, then correct them if you don't want them to do that. Correct? Right? Yeah. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a quick story on that, that same, that same concept. So when I started doing physical therapy, I had a facility, it was uh, maybe 20 miles or 10 miles, whatever. It was some distance, 20 minutes, maybe 10 miles. Um, when I started doing it, I had all these back dogs coming in, right? The dogs that were had uh, were paralyzed in in their back legs, and the majority of them were the dogs that were jumping off the couch. And so I used the same example as you. If I was to jump off six or eight, nine feet, even though I'm six feet and I do that every day, over and over and over again, this is detrimental. And the problem with the back in these little dogs is that if you think about when they're jumping off of the bed, they have to keep momentum moving forward so that they don't face plant. So their back has to arch tremendously wow. in order to keep going. So somewhere you know, in the mid back, they, they have to bend it so that they keep going and then they would blow a disc and, you know, and get paralyzed. So I think to your point, and to the question uh, that was asked, um, domestic lifestyle, the domestic world that our little friends live with us in is not um, biologically typical of how they would 
you know, what they would have if they were out in, in the environment, right? They would not be jumping on and off of beds and couches, you know, and doing, doing those on a regular basis. So I say no. Yeah, I, you pick them up, put them down. If they have to sleep in bed with you, I think the stairs, I don't have a problem with the stairs. I have a problem sometimes with the way that they barrel down the stairs because of the same, same concept around the back. Um, but, uh, that, that's, that's the big one. I think the bed is tough. So obviously there are tools that are out there with the stairs, which are great, but then the doorbell rings and the dog still goes flying off of it. So if you can train them from a young age, go up the stairs, down the stairs, up the stairs, down the stairs, that's great. But otherwise, I'd say pick them up or don't put them on at all. Yeah. And would this be big dogs, little dogs, all dogs? I mean, you know, obviously I mean, I guess if they're jumping Dane. off the couch, yeah. Great Dane isn't going to jump off the probably couch. But if you yeah. do have a big dog jumping off, make them stop jumping off. Yeah, I mean, I think for the compressive force on the hind end, when they have to come out and then you add their weight to that, I don't think it's a good thing. It's not something that they would naturally repetitively do. And I think it puts just a lot of unnecessary stress. Uh, thank you. I want my dog in bed with me, right? So, I mean, I pick him up. He comes up to the side of the bed. I pick him up. And I always, when I get out of bed, he's going with me. Same right? here. He's not staying in bed. Yep. Yeah. Same here. I I do the same thing. And I love that you gave me that visual of what is happening to the back when they jump off. Now I can just say, I wouldn't do it. And here's why. <laughs> this yes, is what Dr. Yes. James St. Clair told me. So thank you so much for that information and sure. all your information and your incredible website, topdoghealth.com. You also have a Facebook page, a Facebook group, an Instagram. And then this is Thank you so much for sharing all the information. I'm going to be your You're new welcome. biggest fan, and I can't wait to see your w new website. When is it going to come out? Uh, I think we're hoping for February 1st awesome. um, is, is the goal, so we'll see how that goes. Cool. I look forward to it, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Same. It was great. So fun. Right.